Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series and we're going to be talking about a power series and what it is. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We know what a series is, right? We have the summation k equals 1 to infinity of our a sub k, right? And our a sub k is going to be the representation for all of our terms. So here we have an example, k equals 1 to infinity of 10 to the k divided by k factorial. Notice here that this is not a function of x. That is different from what a power series is. So a power series is where we actually have a function of x. We have the summation k equals 0 to infinity of ck x to the power of k. Now ck, those are all just going to be scalars, right? So if I were to fill this out, first we have, would have c0 times x to the power of 0, which is just 1, right? And that's going to be our first coefficient, or the first scalar, plus c1 x to the power of 1, plus c2 x squared, c3 x cubed, right? And then do you see the pattern here going on? So this is a function of x. We are getting greater in the power of x, right? Now, another way that power series are represented as ck times x minus a to the power of k. This is where the center of the series is that value of a. So that could be 2, 3, you know what I mean? And so if we were to write these out, we would have c0 plus, and that's going to be c1, x minus a, plus c2, x minus a squared, c3, x minus a cubed, and then this is going to go on forever. Another way to think of power series is that you are building up polynomials. So first you start out with a degree zero polynomial. That's just going to be the scalar, right? C naught. And then you go to degree one, right? This is going to be C naught plus C one X. Then you go up to a second degree polynomial and then a third degree polynomial all the way until we get to some general N, right? And so that's going to be going all the way down to CN X to the power of N. We can represent this with a series and this is going to be a finite series. The summation K equals zero to N of ck x to the power of k. Now, a power series is where we have that it's an infinite series. This is going to go to infinity. So you can think about it as a super polynomial. It is a huge polynomial. That degree goes off to infinity. Now, let's go ahead and think of an example. Here's a very basic one. We have a summation n equals 0 to infinity of x to the power of n. So if I were to write this out, we would have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And this is just going to go on forever. That right there is a power series, but what makes this interesting? The interesting part is the x values. If I were to plug in a number, would the series diverge or would it converge? Now, if I were to plug in x is equal to 1, we have the summation n equals 0 to infinity of 1 to the power of n. But 1 to the power of n, no matter what n is, is just going to be 1. So this is going to be the summation of 1. So here, we're just going to be adding 1 forever. And so when we're adding 1 forever, this is going to diverge, right? and it's going to diverge to infinity. Now, if you wanted to find something that converge, maybe we have to think of a small number. So let's do x is equal to 1 half. Then we have the summation n equals 0 to infinity, and that's going to be 1 half to the power of n. Now, this is a geometric series. In this case, we have the common ratio is 1 half, right? This is going to be less than 1, so this series converges. And we also can tell what it converges to, right? This is going to converge to a over 1 minus r, in our case, the first term is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 half. That is 1 divided by 1 half, which is equal to 2. So here we can plug in different x values, and that's going to tell us if the series converges or diverges. So that is what makes a power series a bit interesting. Here's another one, the summation n equals 0 to infinity. x minus 2 to the power of n divided by n plus 1. So let's go ahead and plug in n values. So first we plug in n is equal to 0. We get 1 over 1, which is just equal to 1, plus n is equal to 1, so we get x minus 2 divided by 1 plus 1, which is 2. x minus 2, and that's going to be squared divided by 3. x minus 2 to the power of 3 divided by 4, and then this is going to go on forever. So now we want to go ahead and plug in x values. That's going to make this interesting. So here, let's go ahead and just plug in something like x is equal to 3. Here we have the summation n equals 0 to infinity, and that's going to be 3 minus 2 to the power of n divided by n plus 1. This is where we get 1 to the power of n, but instead of writing 1 to the power of n, I'm just going to write 1. 1 raised to anything is 1, and then 1 divided by n plus 1. So now we have a series, and we can evaluate if this is going to diverge or converge. I'm going to go ahead and use the integral test. So I'm going to take the limit as b approaches infinity because I want a proper integral. Notice here I'm going to start at 0, go up to b, and that's going to be 1 over x plus 1 dx. So here we can take the antiderivative of this. We get the limit as b approaches infinity, 
this is going to be the natural log of x plus 1 evaluated between 1 and b. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So as b approaches infinity, natural log of infinity is just going to diverge to infinity. So because our integral diverges, that also means that our series is going to diverge. Let's go ahead and try plugging in another interesting value. So here I'm going to go ahead and plug in x is equal to 1. So we have the summation n equals 0 to infinity, and that's going to be 1 minus 2, negative 1, to the power of n divided by n plus 1. Now we have the alternating series of this one, right? So this is going to be an alternating series. And our a sub n is going to be 1 over n plus 1. So the first thing we need to show is that our a sub n terms are non-increasing. You can do that by treating it as a function. So let's say f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1. We want to go ahead and show that this is decreasing, and we can use the first derivative test. So here we get negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. When we square a term, that's always going to be positive. We do have a critical value, right? x cannot be equal to negative 1, but that's okay because our index starts at 0 and goes to positive numbers. So we don't have to worry about x equals negative 1. So here we have our first derivative is going to be less than 0 for x values greater than or equal to 0. So since the first derivative is negative, that tells us f of x is decreasing for x greater than or equal to 0. And since our function is increasing, that also tells us that our a sub n terms are decreasing. And this is going to be for n greater than or equal to 0. So we have that our terms are non-increasing or decreasing. The second thing we need to show is the limit. So we take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n plus 1. Naturally, this is going to go to 0, and that's exactly what we want. As n gets really large, 1 over n plus 1 goes to 0. Since both of these conditions are met, we have that this series converges by the alternating series test. So the thing about power series is that we want to find the specific x values for which it converges or diverges. And so that's what makes them a bit interesting, and you can think of them just as giant polynomials, right? So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist that are linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.